addiction, is a loner, confused, has a drinking problem, and without plans for the future. Whiskey, also an outsider, spent time in jail and has an anti-people attitude. He talks loud and excitedly. Minor characters, Charlie is Dan's son, the young boy is Dan's grandson. Gina is Dan's girlfriend, and Rembrandt is Whiskey's grandson. All right, the lights go up, and there's the sound of a car engine. This storm feels like raindrops tap dancing on my car roof. I've traveled through storms, bumpy roads, past too many bars, McDonald's, highway signs. A million miles of observing life from behind the wheel. People both straight and peculiar. Yes, an adventurous ride of 50 years, give or take. I have picked up hitchhikers back in the day, stopped when people got a, got a hell of a lot crazier, but still feel guilty driving past my fellow man. This weather reminds me of a storm a long time ago. There's a pause as he rubs the windshield and peers out. I headed home from a construction site in West Hampton, New York, a trip I made many times, <laughs> sometimes sober, often drunk or stoned. No, that's still you. Is that you? No, that's you. Um, a lightning bolt lit up the dark, angry sky and the road. <coughs> I glimpsed a figure sloshing through the storm, limping some and wearing a, a rain-soaked <coughs> hoodie, his hand and thumb clearly extended. What the hell is a hitchhiker doing out in god-awful weather? The guilty feeling grabbed hold and I, with some reluctance, pulled over, let the stranger in. He pulls over, opens the passenger door. Jesus, you look like a saturated human sponge. Take this beach towel and dry yourself off. There's a pause while the hitchhiker dries himself, and then Dan drives back onto the road. Thanks, mister. Gonna take off this hoodie. Notice you watching me. People say I look like a TV commercial character. I'm Mr. Clean with my bald head and these here arms. Whiskey flexes his muscles. These neck tattoos and broken nose makes him think different. Yeah. Thanks again for the towel. Been walking this road for a good five miles and nobody stopped. Not nobody. Hell, nobody can slow down except you. Damn them fancy Hampton people and them damn fancy cars. Too stuck up to help ordinary folks. I couldn't have said it better. Your car break down? <laughs> Dan jumps out of his seat in surprise. Jeez, what the hell was that? Don't got a car! Where I come from wouldn't need a car. Guess, mister, guess where I come from. Dan makes quick glances at Whiskey, who's gesturing wildly with his hands, spittle flying out of his mouth. No, 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 forget what I just said. How the hell you know where I come from, where I've been? Hey, this here dashboard sounds like a drum. Oh. You got any booze? Any whiskey, mister? Sorry, none aboard. How will I remove myself from this character? <laughs> Dan concentrates on driving and squeezes the steering wheel. You don't say much. You always hold a steering wheel like you're choking it? <laughs> Bet you're wondering what I'm up to. Dan nah. He's adjusting the rear view mirror. Now, nah, it's not real. It's, it's your business, not mine. Dan. Listen, yeah, no, no. listen, I can't answer your questions and keep this damn car on the road. This is a god-awful storm out there. Well, mister, I'm going to tell you where I've been anyways. They released me from county jail. All my belongings in this bag, I'm jiggling in your face. Why did you give me a damn umbrella? Well, I wish there was no downpour. Wish he's still in jail. Wish some other fool picked him up. Balls. All this wishing not getting me anywhere. What? What'd you say? Bet you're wondering what I did wrong. I got arrested for assault. Aggravated assault. <laughs> you look ill, mister. <laughs> hey, not to worry. I ain't gonna hurt you. There's some people at the jail I'd really like to hurt. He's supposed to be cracking his knuckles. Like the sound of my knuckles cracking, the sound of dry tree branches snapping. I wish he'd quit calling me mister. Maybe start a conversation, maybe ask him his name. Well, that might make him suspicious. Remember the expression, curiosity killed the cat. What'd you say? 
Bet you wonder who I am, my name and all that stuff. Damn shakes. It's Francis. <laughs> can you beat that? My folks went and give me a damn girl's name. You can call me Frank. He reaches back into the rear seat. All you got, all you got in this back seat toolbox is tools. <laughs> I seriously need some whiskey. How does a man drive around all day without something to wet his whistle? Where do you keep the hard stuff? I'm sorry, I'm trying to shake the habit. I can't, I can stop at a liquor store in Patchogue. It's only a few miles west of here. There's a friend I need to visit. Ah, oh, um, liquor, now you're talking my talk. Why, you go give me a ride, mister. Nobody else did. You're not a homo. Because I had my fellow queers back at the jail. <laughs> you got me all wrong. I hitchhiked often as a boy and felt guilty living, leaving you out in the storm. All right. That's a acceptable answer. <laughs> I beat up two faggots pretty bad and the rest of them stopped bothering me. Must be grateful being a free man. Now you talking, wooey! <laughs> Where are you heading? Got me a sweet lady waiting back in Queens. Got the prettiest ass and smells so good. So, uh, where the hell is your sweet lady today? Your release day. If it was your release day and you hadn't tunneled out from j <coughs> tunneled out of jail, I also know what your next question is. Can't hear ya. You got a lady friend, mister? I had a woman young enough to be my daughter. The last words were how I like my hand around, how I like my hand around liquor bottle more than her waist. There's one reason you don't see any booze. Got a new girlfriend and she's a great cook. That's good. <laughs> That's your good, mister. Something tells me you're not being square with me. That's not true. Dan Pierce to the windshield. Ah, rain's the rain is easing up the liquor store. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Rain is easing up. Liquor store's right around the corner. Have to, have to let you out right here. Sorry. The Eagles song, Life in the Fast Lane, plays in the background. Hold on there, mister. You and me got unfinished business. I need to reach into this damn soap sweat's pocket. He searches his pocket. That's, that's enough, Frank, Francis, whatever your name is. Keep your hand out of your pocket. All these years I felt safe in my car, protected by a hard steel and glass exterior. You're erasing my safe feeling, stirring up, stirring up emotions, fight or flight. And I don't like that feeling one damn bit. Oh, look at what we got here, our honest-to-goodness fighter. Bet you got a big lump in your throat. Got to hand it to you. Sure got a lot of balls shooting off with a mouth. What's your name again? What do you think I got in this pocket? A knife? Pistol? A razor-sharp box cutter? You tell me what's there, and my name is Dan. Maybe I should exit the road, take a break, a long detour. What am I saying? I'm not making any damn sense. I hear you, mister. Maybe you've been living life in the fast lane too long. That's one of my eagle favorite songs. Sounds like you need to slow down. Look, right here, mister. All I'm pulling from my pocket is a harmless wallet. Ha, ha. The eagle music fades away. You son of a bitch. Phew. You sound like a bad tire losing air pressure. <laughs> Buy a drink for giving me a lift. Nice of you to hear me out. Uh, people say I talk too much, and that gets me in trouble. Say, look what else I got in this pocket. Small tube of paint and a brush. Must have been in these jeans whole time I was held in jail. <laughs> Not much of a chance to paint behind steel bars. Hmm. You tell me you're a painter, an artist? Not a house painter? More like a Van Gogh? Or a Toulouse-Lautrec? No way. Been painting long as I remember. When people and bad memories crowd round real tight, when my nightmares wake me screaming and kicking, that's when I go to paint. It helps ease the pain. I love to paint pretty things, sunsets, flowers, bring them to life. Can't afford bunches of roses, sunflowers, so I create them at home on canvas. You know what I'm saying? The way you tell it, I sure do. That's nice, real special. Can't pay for plane tickets or hotels in places like Paris, Rome, Tokyo, or London. So I sit down and paint them city's attractions. He pretends he's painting on a canvas. Eiffel Tower, Big Ben, and a hell of a lot more. You get it, right? Got a son and a grandson I live with. We're not behind bars of steel. She 
Jeez, who knew my criminal had a flip side to his life? What's that, mister? Hmm? Teaching my grandson something about being an artist. He got talent. Gets all excited working with paint and brush. <laughs> I call him Rembrandt. You got children, mister? I have a son and grandson. They don't live close by. Best you keep close to your blood. Amazing good stuff you're talking, but sorry. I really do have to turn around and get back to West Hampton. I've got an important package. There's a long pause. Dan glances back and forth at Whiskey. You look angry, disappointed, like you don't believe me. Nah, not angry. Hell, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'll find a bar and someone to talk over a, to talk to over a drink. Thanks again, mister. You restored my faith in, uh, in, uh, uh Humanity! Oh, I'm sorry. Is that you? That's you. No, it's you. No, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, humanity is the word you're looking for. And don't mention it any... Uh, I mean, see ya. He pulls over and stops the car. Christ, almost answered any time. I don't need a convict asking for word pronunciations whenever he wishes. What was that? Dan doesn't answer and turns his head away. Gotta get your dashboard another rat-a-tat-tat. <laughs> Bet you don't forget old Francis too soon. He begins to leave the car and hesitates. Give me your name and address. I, I want to send you something. Think you'll like it. I know, I know you will. Dan turns off the engine and they both leave the car. Dan walks to center stage and talks to the audience. I gave him a false name, a hardly used post office box, and watched as he hobbled across the street walked half a block, disappeared around the corner. I sat there for a few minutes thinking. My hitchhiker aroused several emotions, fear, relief, surprise, and some appreciation for being in my shoes and not his. Oh, that long ago night, back in the quiet of my small, sparsely furnished apartment, I turned on the TV news channel and listened to an animated reporter showed a photo of an escaped prisoner from the New York City jail. On the screen was a number to call for anyone with information. Of course, it wasn't my talkative hitchhiker. But if it was, I would have phoned in a report. Hell, we all make mistakes. But don't get a, but don't get a second chance. Maybe this escaping needed someone to give him a break, a second chance. Maybe he once had a good thing going for him. That makes me think of something. Dan pulls an old 8mm projector and several reels of film out of the closet. He threads the film to the projector, flips the switch, turns down the lights, and revisits a long ago time. Dan sounds excited as he points at the screen. Hey, look! Hey, look! That's my little Charlie Boy, sm Charlie Boy smacking his lips on that turkey. There's Aunt Lucy smiling and toasting everyone. That Thanksgiving seems like only yesterday. The snow was nearly up to my knees. And there's little Charlie in a sailor suit and ice skates at Rockefeller Center. It's a long pause. He appears in deep thought. He points again at the screen. A broad, grateful smile fills his face, and then he sobs. He turns off the projector, snaps his fingers, picks up the cell phone, and dials. Son who is standing on the far side of the stage uh, holding the phone. Charlie, how are you? How's sunny Florida? How's Ginny, and especially how is my grandson? <clears throat> uh, Dad, what's wrong? Nothing wrong, son, except me. Uh, everyone healthy and doing well, Dad? Uh, it's it's kind of so surprised to hear your voice. It's been. Uh... Yes, yes, it's been a long time, too long. And what's wrong always. What's wrong always been me, Charlie? I'd like to be a better father and grandfather. Yeah, don't beat yourself up, Dad. Dan, no. Listen to me, Charlie. Well, I have the good sense to tell you what I'm feeling. I like my family back, including you, your wife, Ginny. Can't do nothing about the past, but I know I can do better. I can do be, be a better man moving forward. Think about it some, and if it's a yes, maybe I can drive down for a visit. Uh, got Charlie Jr. close by. Uh, say hello to your grandson. Charlie, that you, my grandson? Silence for a moment. Dan squeezes the telephone, 
with both hands. Come on, Charlie, say hello to your granddad. Hello, Grandpa. You coming to see me one day? Yes, Charlie. Not one day, but, but real soon. That's a promise. Okay, Grandpa. Hope to see you real soon. Son and grandson exit the stage, and Dan talks to the audience. That was the beginning of the road back, a different kind of road, back to my flesh and blood. I've told few about the hitchhiker incident. Who would believe me and how it would help? He surely was one cool character. Said his name was Francis or Frank, <laughs> I think his name was Whiskey. I don't know if he understood the good deed he performed that stormy night. I, cer I certainly do. The lights dim. Scene two, the lights come up. Dan talks to the audience. Crazy thing happened a couple, several months after my meeting Whiskey. I received a notice from the post office by the package. It was a painting of Whiskey sloshing through the storm under a wind-whipped umbrella. Bottle of Whiskey in his extended right hand, a big Cheshire cat smile on his face. As the years passed, I sometimes wonder what became of Whiskey. I'm now seeing a woman named Gina, an artist. She lives in the East Village. She's real good to me, keeps me grounded, and it keeps me off booze and drugs. I told her about my past transgressions and about my encounter with whiskey. Recently, we spent a lazy afternoon strolling in and out of the art dealer shops in the East Village. A cluster of paintings in one shop caught my attention, and all were signed Rembrandt. Gina enters the stage, kisses Dan, and hands him a painting. I spoke to the dealer, and here's another of his paintings. This dealer claims your Rembrandt boy is getting lots of attention. Dan examines the signature. Positive, I, I'm positive I know this Rembrandt artist. Small world, I've met him twice. He's rough around the edges, but he's got a powerful touch with a paintbrush. Is he about 25, talks of a relative getting him started as an artist? Yes, he talks fondly about, about a grandfather with a problem dealing with people. That <laughs> sounds like old whiskey. I want to tell you something. One day I woke and realized I've been jealous of whiskey, of his special relationship with Rembrandt. Now I have a closeness to my own son and grandson. Do you want to meet the young man? He talks so often about one small moment in time that happened so long ago. Bet this art dealer could arrange a meeting with your young Rembrandt. The lights dim. The next scene is Rembrandt's apartment. Her canvas is scattered around the room. Tom, Rembrandt, Dan, and Gina are in the room. And the lights go up. Tom, I'd like you to meet Rembrandt. You two have sort of met, indirectly that is. What she means is I met your grandfather years ago. He was hitchhiking hitchhiking in a bad storm, and I gave him a list. He told me about his paintings, about a young boy, a grandson, nicknamed Rembrandt. Never forgot the warm way he spoke of you. Yeah, I got what you're saying. Uh, Gramps left an impression on most people he met. Sometimes, uh, sometimes wonder what Gramps would have accomplished as a painter if he wasn't messed up in the head. Beats me how the name Rembrandt took hold, except uh, he's one of the top old master painters. Don't believe we have any Dutch blood, though. Hmm. Is Whiskey still alive? Too bad. I'd like to spend some time thanking him for putting me on the road back to my family. Uh, yeah, he told me. Uh, he told me a story of your meeting. Uh, didn't get. He, didn't he give you something? Uh, <coughs> I, I don't, now I remember. It was a painting of Gramps in that very storm. I took a chance and brought the painting with me. Dan unwraps the canvas cover, covering the painting. Ooh, wee! That is Gramps' painting. Hold on to it real tight. I got people sniffing around here looking for an unusual story to attach to my work. A tale about a prisoner with, uh, with plenty of artistic talent who nurtures, a grands, who nurtures a grandson might make that painting worth a hell of a lot. Rembrandt rubs his nose hard with the back of his hand as Gina pokes Dan in the ribs. See, you have two whiskeys. I mean, your grandfather's habits often rubbing his nose and landing out with that woo-ee sound. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> uh, uh, you think so? Uh, what do you know about that? Dan said your grandfather became easily excited, even irritated at times. I've seen Gramps lose his temper plenty of times, but never showed that side to me. I, I know how much he loved me. Uh, Grant looks again at the painting. Hey, uh, people, uh, 
I, I completely forgot, not being much of a host. Uh, can I give you two something to drink? Hey, you got any whiskey? Whiskey? <laughs> Don't answer that. Only kidding. <laughs> uh, hey, what do you know? I, I do have whiskey. Uh, he opens the whiskey and pours, and they toast. Uh, to Gramps or whiskey, as you call them. To Gramps or whiskey, as you call them. Come on, Gina. This young man needs to get back to his painting. Dan and Gina walk to the side of the stage, and Rembrandt leaves the stage. What a special meeting for both of you. You must be feeling so excited. And Gina kisses Dan's cheek, but it's a little far. <laughs> <laughs> the word is speechless, plain and simple. <clears throat> Gina leaves the stage, and Dan talks to the audience. I've heard, through, I've heard through a few of Gina's art for, the old friends how Rembrandt's paintings are selling in the five figures. I just made guess Whiskey's painting over to an appraiser. Who knew? Lastly, in the years since my encounter with Whiskey, every time I drive that stretch of the Long Island Road, I expect to see that poor soul hobbling along. I know he passed away, but I've never forgotten him. I haven't been seriously under the influence or picked up a hitchhiker since. when Dan sometimes is talking to a person and then sometimes to the audience. But how do you, how do you think of differentiating in a performance because some of what Dan is saying is to whiskey and some of what he's saying is what he's thinking and doesn't dare say. That's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> and I just wondered how you were planning to show that to the audience. Uh, honestly, I don't have an answer for that one. I have many short stories that I've written over a number of years. I probably had like about 50 short stories. And about three or four months ago, I started converting a few of them to one act plays. So I really haven't addressed that. Well, it can be done. I just don't know what you know. Can you you have it pre-recorded. Oh, the recording. The recording. Yeah, you pre-record it, and then it's in a different. If it's coming through a mic. Okay. From a different place on the stage, it, we will all okay. understand all right. that it's in yeah. his head, not. Okay, that's that's a suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I have a, a nitpicky thing about the uh, the first play, the DiMaggio play. Uh, when Joe DiMaggio was sixty-five in the play. Yes. Um, I think when Joe DiMaggio was 65, I don't believe cell phones had been invented yet. Yeah. So, is this, is this a ghost of DiMaggio? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking maybe this is, you know, maybe this is uh, DiMaggio coming back in spirit to talk to this account. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, if he's on the boardwalk, there could be a phone booth. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Uh, I gotta change that. No, but somebody, but the guy was talking, there is... He called his wife on the cell phone. Right. Wife. Yes. Yeah. He could be at a phone booth. They did have those. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. You're saying she yeah, was I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just saying that the yeah. cell phone yeah. is yeah. incongruous yeah. with right. the right. 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 yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. I had him on a phone. I had him on a, on a Ford yeah. walk yeah. phone, and then they changed it. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> really, use days. your numbers. You said 1954, and then 35 years later, which right. is 89. They didn't have them yet. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Right. I thought they same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's really yeah. I have a question. As from from the author's viewpoint, if your play was picked, the second one, and in there this Dan says, uh, "Son of a bitch" or something, he curses. Yeah, I said it, so I should know. <laughs> you were there. The play, this play would take place in the church, and if they went to you and said, you have to change that line, 
Did you feel any qualms about changing the line? No, we didn't say it. It's I think I would consider, I would think, if there was something that could replace it. Um, I know you're doing. <laughs> it wouldn't change. Would it change in your view, Dan's personality, or just something at that moment? No, I don't think it would. I think I could replace it with something. Well, yeah, you, you could always sort of, not quite say it. Yeah, you know, sort of, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, the, th the other thing is that yeah. it's not a play that's overload, overladen. You know, loaded yeah. with curse words. Yeah. Yeah. If you throw in the bitch, it'll slip by everybody. Nobody will notice. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So that was just a fantasy thing for, of you, that you of yours? Was that, that just a that's, fantasy? That story? Yeah. Most that of these stories happened. Yeah. Well, you met Joe? The, the uh, kernel for each story happened. You met Joe? I was on Sunrise Highway, and I did pick up a just released from Riverhead GM. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm driving, I'm saying, what the hell did I do? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's true. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Joe, Joe, I was on the boardwalk, and I see this figure coming at me, and he wasn't a typical Atlantic City boardwalk, um, you know, character. So both, he, most of the stories. Did he talk to you, with, or you, you just? Pardon? Did he talk to you? I passed him, and I acknowledged Mr. Garagio, but we didn't have this conversation. That's what he did. Okay. And he, and he didn't play. Uh, <laughs> you know, no, no, no. a presence. Mm -hmm. He definitely is a presence. Oh yeah, no, I just yeah, meant he was giving advice to the local. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job. Thank you. Okay, yeah. I, I live under a rock. I don't know anything about baseball, <laughs> but I mean, I, I used to be a Dodgers fan, but. Um, Joe DiMaggio knows a big hero. He's a big hero. It, it, it just made me squirm a little bit to think of him working as, at this job almost like a, uh, like a, a green call girl or something, entertaining the guests. I mean, yeah. it was kind of a meeting. He also meaning. sold Mr. Coffee, Mr. Coffee, coffee Maker. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a big space in between us. Well, George Foreman and the it, it, people, it, 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 people did that. They do do. They did do that. Guys, right. back he was just he a was physical, physical trainer. trainer. He did not make a lot he of money. He was a trainer in New York and, uh, right. and City. Mm -hmm. Not the way they're making money. Yeah. I think Joe yeah. Lewis yeah. worked uh, a greeter in the casino. No, they all had winter yeah. jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had winter yeah. jobs. They weren't making the kind of money these guys were making. Really? Yeah. Really well. Thank you. Thank you, Tony.